guess who's just done most of this video and realised he hadn't hit record? Me. Hello, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can uh, use Lurping in Unity uh, and eventually a, a free sort of asset uh, called Dootween to get some even more functionality on top of our Lurps uh, to make health bars or mana bars. Um, Using Dootween specifically, you can see that there's a nice kind of like bouncing animation as it does it. If you don't want to use any assets, I'll show you how you could do it yourself and animate a health bar um, for when you take damage that it'll sort of slowly slide between them. You don't have to just cut and have it really jarring. First, let's start over in our little scene here. This is the code for a vector3.lerp. Um, and I'll let's just go in straight into the code and I'll show you kind of what's going on here. So. So at the top here, I've just got some variables. I've got the left position, the right position, uh, the indicator, which is the arrow. Importantly though, I've got a max value, which I've set to 100, and then a current value, which is gonna start at zero. And then I've got the increase speed, which is, um, as I hold a key, that's just how fast we're gonna increase our current value. And then I've got some text and the gems, which I'm gonna change the um, text and the color of them further down. And then to change the color of the gems, I've got my colors here. So. Um, I'm going to set the start color to whatever our um, gems color is at the start, and then I'm going to call lerp value, which is a function that we're going to be using. But I'm just calling it here initially just to set all of the values up properly. So then in our update function, um, I've got input.getKey, uh, DNA are going to either increase the uh, current value or decrease it, and it's going to go up or down based on our uh, increase speed uh, times by delta time. Then I'm going to clamp our current value between zero and the max value, and then we're going to finally lerp the value. So lerp value is where the kind of the lerping magic happens, as it were. So we've got a float called t, and this is equal to our current value divided by the maximum value, and this gives us a percentage. So if our maximum value is uh, 100, and our current value is 50, then t is going to be 0 0.5, because it'll be 50% current value would be 50% of the maximum value. And then we've got some text in the scene, which I'm just gonna to set to T so we can see what's happening. And then we've got a vector3.lerp and a color.lerp here. And a lot of data types within Unity have lerp functions. So uh, vector3 is dot one of them, colors dot one of them, uh, colors one of them as well. You know, you could do vector2.lerp um, to lerp between two vector twos. Um, and you could do floats. Uh, you could lerp floats as well with uh, mathf.lerp. And if we, Look at the IntelliSense here. So lerp itself uh, linearly interpolates, which is what lerp stands for, uh, between A and B by T. So let's have a look at what's going on down here and then back in this scene. So indicator.transform.position is equal. So the indicator is the arrow, uh, is equal to vector3.lerp. And on the left, which is value A, we've put uh, left, dot po uh, left pos dot position in value B, vector three B, uh, we've got right position, uh, right pos dot position. And then T is the value here, which is that percentage between sort of the minimum and the maximum values. And we're doing the exact same thing. Ooh, we're doing the exact same thing here. So we've got our left gem and our right gem, and we're setting the materials color uh, to a value somewhere between the start color and the end color, again, based on T. But using this transform.position, the vector3.lerp, we can see exactly what's going on in our scene here. So if I hit play, see this is the code that we had written, but just kind of splayed out for you here. So we've got the arrow and the value T, which is zero. And you can see that zero is directly over uh, what would be A in that equation and in the function. Um, and as T increases, we move up towards between zero and one, and we move up to our right pos dot position. So when we've got a T value of one, we're fully whatever the value of B is. When we're a value of uh, zero, we're fully whatever the value of uh, the left position is. And you can see that as we increase, the color of the gems change as well. So this is that color dot lerp. So the closer to one we get, uh, where the gems go green, and then closer to zero we are, the gems are red. And you'll see that if we're at 0 0.5, which is, you know, 50%, 50 percent of the way between the uh, value A and value B, we're kind of somewhere in between. So the arrow is, you know, visibly halfway between left and right. And the color, it's not red, it's not green, it's kind of like a yellowy sort of orange color. Um, but this is that code kind of laid out for you in a more visible way. Um, Hopefully that kind of makes sense, and maybe that's all you need from this video. Uh, maybe this has helped you helped it click 
for you. Um, but let's look at some more practical examples. So just going to head over to our uh, health scene. So in our health scene, uh, here you can see that we've got a health percentage uh, and a current health. And in the script for our health lerp, it's getting dark very quickly. So in the health lerp script, so we've got an image, which is the fill bar. Uh, we've got our max health, which I defaulted to 100, but I've actually set to 120 in the uh, inspector. And we've got a public float, which is our current health. Uh, public float, which previous health, new health, which are, we all need to kind of animate the value. And then we've got a damage amount and a heal amount, which is just when I press the keys on the keyboard, we're going to either take damage or heal to make the health bar go up or down. And then we've just got a reference to some text. And then we have a bool and a float here, which are going to control um, the animation between sort of value one and value two. And then T, which we're going to use in a couple of functions. So I've had to set it sort of at the top, not locally within the function, just so we can access that in multiple places. And then in our awake function, I'm setting the current, previous and new health to our maximum health. So the bar is going to start fully full. And then we're just setting the text. So the health percent is uh, current health uh, divided by max health which gives us a, a, the T value. What I could do as well is I could times this by 100 and that would actually give us a proper percentage, but I'm just gonna leave it as a decimal because it helps illustrate what T is. Um, maybe instead of health percent, I'll rename that to health T, just so we can again, visualize it. And then we've got health amount and this is what the current health is actually set at. And when I press space on the keyboard or enter, or return on the keyboard, I'm either gonna take damage or I'm gonna heal. And this is where that bool comes into play. So if, the, if we should be lerping, then let's lerp the damage. So when I press a key, we're gonna change the health and we're either gonna take damage or heal. And you can see here that, um, so when I change health, I need to set the previous health. I need to keep a record of what the previous health was. Um, so I'm gonna take previous health and that's equal to our what our health currently is. And then our new health is gonna be um, the current health minus whatever the damage is. Um, and because I'm putting in negative heal amount, two negatives make a positive, so that would actually heal um, the player. Uh, that way I don't need a damage player and a heal player, I can just do it through the one function. And then I'm just gonna clamp our new health between um, zero and whatever our maximum health is, so we can't go kind of into negative or above our maximum health. And then once I've changed the health, I'm gonna set should lerp um, to true. So if should, so when should lerp becomes true, we're going to come back up here. So if should lerp, then we're going to lerp the damage. And this function gets a little bit, um, it's not massively complicated, but you know, it, there's a lot going on. So I'll just go through it. Sorry, I, I told a lie earlier. Uh, T wasn't set globally um, because I used it in multiple places. It was set because I needed it to initially start at zero. And if I declared it in here in lerp damage, then every frame it would get reset to zero. So this wouldn't actually increase. Um, what I should probably do instead of having it up here, um, you know, I could put it down here instead. So we know that it's above lerp damage. We're only going to use it in lerp damage. Um, so then the current health is going to equal uh, mathf.lerp and then we're going to set current health to um, whatever the T value is between our previous health and our new health. So in the case of taking damage, um, say, you know, we started at uh, full health, which is I think 120 in this case, and our new health was uh, 100 because we took 20 damage. And then whatever our T value is, and T is gonna increase here, um, based on a speed that we provide. So T will go from zero to one and it'll increase until, um, you know, until the current health meets our new health. So T is gonna start at zero and then it's gonna go, it's gonna increase. So we're gonna go from our previous health, which would be in the example I just outlined, uh, 120. And then it's gonna steadily go between A and B. Uh, B is our new health, which is 100, um, based on T, which again is gonna go between zero and one. I'm going to set the fill amount and the fill bar to that percentage of the current health divided by the max health. The reason I'm setting the fill amount here and not directly when we damage the health is because our current health, as you can see, as T increases every frame, so our current health is going to change every frame as well. So in that in, so in that instance, um, 
will want to have it go down. Uh, what we could do is if we wanted to set our current health like instantly, so if you took damage, your current health was instantly applied, uh, we'd probably need like another float in here, like temporary health, and then we could set that to um, this lerp, and then we could set then set the fill amount. I didn't want to complicate things too much, so we're just, you know, we take damage and our current health is going to slowly decrease and it's the matter of like half a second so it's not not a big deal and then we're going to set our text here which is the same as the text above and then what we're doing here is that we're checking that if our current health is equal to our new health so if one is uh you know so if t hits one then uh should lerp is going to equal false and t will be reset to zero and with should lerp being false then you know this isn't getting called in our update function so let's see this in action again. So if we go over here, uh, we'll see that that changes. So health T is one. And if I press space and we take damage, you can see that it animates down. And this is based on a that lerp speed. So if I go over to our um, canvas, is where I've got the script. So we've got a lerp speed here. If I set this to 0 0.5, it's not gonna change as quickly. So we've got a lerp speed. If I press space, you can see that it'll slowly go from our, whatever our current health was. So our current health is 110. If I, when I press space, we're gonna take 10 damage. So our previous health is gonna set, get set to our current health, which is 110. Our new health will get changed to our current health minus the damage amount, and then we'll slowly lerp to that value. See the current health slowly going down, 0 0.5 seconds, it's going down to 100. And it works the other way as well. So we've got heal amount 20. Uh, so we're gonna go up and we're gonna heal by 20. And if I get to full health, nothing's gonna happen because we're clamping the value. And again, we can go back down like that. Uh, and then again, you can increase it. So if you want it to be nice and quick, you can just space. So that's how you could do it through you know, code and have like an animated lerp uh, going from one value to the other instead of just immediately setting it uh, like we did in the arrow scene. But now if we go over to, uh, we've got, a, I've got a mana scene here and this is using uh, Dootween, as I said. Uh, so Dootween is a free asset. Like I said, it's, you can just grab it, click add to my assets and then import it into your project. So if I hit play, it's doing the exact same thing as our um, health bar scene was doing uh, we hit space we take the damage and it lerps and we've got the lerp speed here uh, this is different to the lerp speed of the other one uh, in this case the lower the value the quicker it'll lerp so we could do like 0. you know 0. 0.1 um, if we took this up to 2 it'd be slower um, but let's have a look at the code for lerp so everything else is the same up to um, change mana and update mana. So you see that here we've got change health and then we had lerp damage which is quite, which was quite a big, uh, not a big function, but you know. So we've got here uh, change health and then lerp damage. And whereas mana health, we've got change mana, which is just one line and update mana, which is four lines versus like eight, nine and then plus this as well. What we've got here is when we press either space return, we're gonna change or refresh our mana. And then you need to be using uh, dg.tweening for do tween. And then we can change a float by using uh, do virtual float. So this works in a similar way to the lerp. So we're gonna go from our current mana to our current mana minus the damage. This transition is going to last for the lerp speed so if we put 0 0.5 it'll last half a second if we put two it'll take it'll last two seconds um, and then we've passed in a function here uh, called update mana which takes a float value and then i've put set ease and i've set it to an ease here which is just a public ease and i'll, I'll show you this in the sort of inspector in a sec um, and then in our update mana function uh, all we do is we set our current mana to the value that this is passing out we're going to clamp that current mana between uh, zero and our maximum mana. And then we're going to set our fill bar amount to our current mana slash max mana. And then we're going to update the text as well. So this is exactly the same as what we were doing. Uh, we're just finding the percentage between our current mana and our maximum mana. So if we've got 50% of our remaining health, 
50% uh, of our remaining mana, the bar will be 50% full. Um, but the great thing about using Dotween like this, instead of you know doing it manually, is one, it's less lines of code, but you can also set easing. So currently, uh, with Linear, this is just acting exactly how our uh, previous the health bar function was working. So if I hit space, it's just going from its old position to its new position. Linearly, linearly, linear, linearly. Oh, that's a hard word to say. Uh, but we've got all of these different easing types here. So we've got um, what have we got? Some good ones. Uh, we've got in elastic, so it'll bounce before it does it. Um, let's make this uh, one second so we can see it a bit better. So it'll bounce up and then go down. Uh, we've got out elastic, which is just uh, you know makes it a bit more, a bit more like jelly. That's a zero point five, so just makes it a bit more interesting to look at. Um, with the ease in as well, we've got uh, in back, which I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of it went forward and then back, so it kind of grew and then went down. Got the outback, which isn't the the place in Australia. So it goes out and then it goes it goes slightly past where it should go and then bounces back. There's in outback, which will uh, you know, it'll bounce, go back and then bounce to its current value. And then you know this this works as we increase the value as well. I quite like in outback. That's that's a nice one. Now let's make it a bit quicker. So you see that using uh, Dotween, it does a lot of the, it does a massive amount of the heavy lifting for you, um, but also you get the the benefit of being able to ease ease it as well and get even better animations. So that was just a brief sort of intro into Lerps in Unity and specifically how you can use them for health bars or mana bars. If you want to get these project files, including the assets, uh, they're available over on my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. Uh, you'll get the full project files, the scripts, the assets, uh, which you can use in your projects. If this video was helpful, it'd be great if you could let me know. Uh, just leave a comment below, uh, tell me what you liked. And if you didn't like anything about it, let me know as well, just so I can improve my videos going forward. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.